there. I'm Kelly Blackledge from Tamarack National Wildlife Refuge. And today I want to share with you one of my passions and that's frogs. <laughs> Everybody's got some of their favorite wildlife that they like to watch and well, mine happens to be frogs. And frogs are pretty important to our environment. Frogs are great environmental indicators. They can tell us when our water systems are healthy um, or when they're not so healthy. Uh, as you know, frogs live both on land and water, uh, but water is pretty critical. And because their skin is so thin, that's what makes them a good indicator of healthy environments. Let's take a look at some frogs. Great. So as frogs hang out in the water, you can see their big back legs have webbed feet and they can really swim pretty quickly. It's hard to catch them. And their eyes are always sticking out of the water. Frogs have some neat characteristics to them. They have really interesting ears along with that nice, shiny, smooth skin. <laughs> As you can see on this green frog, the ear right behind the eye is ginormous and this usually indicates that it's a male frog. So the ear or the tympanum right behind the eye is bigger than the eye. Male frogs are the ones that make all the sound in the spring and they like to be able to hear themselves sing, you know. <laughs> frogs also have um, big eyes that stick out of the water. This really helps to protect them from predators. So they're always watching around for um, predators that might be coming after them. So their body can be hidden underneath the water, but those big eyeballs stick right out of the water to watch. Well, frogs do lay eggs. This is why they're singing in the, in the springtime. They're looking for a mate and they're laying eggs in the water. So the eggs, like these wood frog eggs, are pretty cool. They're kind of a jelly-like mass, and they usually kind of cling to the vegetation around the edge of the shoreline. You can look for these frog eggs now. Some of these kind of uh, spongy things that kind of hang around the grasses on the edge of the marsh. If you're walking along the edge, you'll, and this one just looks like it has black dots in it. Uh, toad eggs will look pretty similar. Of course, as frogs start to grow, they do develop that tail and start swimming around, kind of fish-like. Um, it does take a while before these frogs develop their legs and start moving onto land, and it does change the what they're eating. Usually frogs will eat a lot of uh, some vegetation or algae and such in the water before they start developing that mouth and legs and start eating insects. It's a pretty neat way to grow up. <laughs> Not everything is born without arms and legs, right? But these guys are. They do have a nice tail to keep them moving through the water and a really big mouth that develops too after they hatch. Well, the wood frog is a frog that comes out first thing in the spring. So sometimes even when there's snow on the ground, the frogs, will, wood frogs will start to move um, out of their hibernating spot, which is usually under the leaf litter in a forest. So wood frogs are the ones with the mask and they do have some lines down their back that you can see there. So if you hear wood frogs calling, um, it might sound something like this. it kind of sounds like a racket, racket, racket. <laughs> and what a racket they can make out in the woods. But these will be the first ones to call. They don't care how cold it is out there. Wood frogs are ready to go the minute they wake up from hibernation. Now the next call that you'll start hearing in the spring is the, spring, is the chorus frog. This is wood frog and the chorus frog. The chorus frog has stripes on its back and is actually really tiny. Chorus frogs have a huge sound. 
And I'm sure you've probably heard chorus frogs before as well. Let's take a listen to what a chorus frog might sound like in Sound familiar? <laughs> Chorus frogs are pretty sweet. And they can really fill a pond. Don't you love it when you can get out to a pond where Chorus frogs are singing and it's just deafening. You know that that's a healthy environment when you hear all of that going on. Well, after chorus frogs and as the temperature rises in the, in the water, um, that's when a new frog will kind of come into those ponds and start singing. They are pretty sensitive to water temperature. Remember, they have very thin skin. So each frog has its own niche in the marsh. Next is the spring peeper. Spring peepers are also very small frogs. They are in the family of tree frogs and sound like their name. <laughs> I think the spring peepers are pretty cool. Now this is a frog that you'll probably hear but rarely see. Now if you do get a chance to see him, you'll know it's a spring peeper because it's so tiny. It has kind of little suction cup toes because it is a tree frog, um, but it'll have an X on its back. You can kind of see it in this picture. Now as the temperature warms up a little more, that's when we'll start hearing the gray tree frog. Wait a minute, that looks a little green. <laughs> well, we really don't have the true green tree frogs here in Minnesota. They're found further south. Our tree frogs are gray tree frogs, even though they turn a little green. Their scientific name is Hyla Versicolor. So that means they can actually change their color. It's very versatile color, kind of like a chameleon. They can uh, blend into their environment pretty well. How many frogs do you see here? There's a green one and a gray one that's camouflaged really well into the tree there. So gray tree frogs are tree frogs with suction cup toes. Well, sometimes you'll see them by, their, by your porch light climbing up the glass to eat the insects right there by your porch. That's a gray tree frog with suction cup toes. And they have a sound that is kind of like a giggle, I think. And that's the gray tree frog. Now there's also one called Cope's gray tree frog which looks exactly the same, but has a little bit different sound to it. Cope's great tree frog, really the only difference is a chromosome, <laughs> but they decided to call it a totally different species because of that. Once it warms up a little more, now we're looking at maybe into June, we'll start hearing the Northern Leopard Frog. Now this is the one with spots, kind of leopardy looking, and the Leopard Frog, likes to hang out in usually larger water. So this is the one you're gonna hear near a lake more often um, and in some grassy areas too. So if you have some areas that are really wet grassy areas, you might hear this sound. So you heard some spring peepers in that call as well in the background. This one has that weird why, I just don't know why. <laughs> it's a very strange sound. Some people think it sounds like you're rubbing a thumb on a balloon, that weird crackly noise there. Now this one will also be one that's kind of fun to catch in the, in the summertime. Kids love catching leopard frogs. 
And again, as the water warms up a little more, then we start hearing the American toad. Um, the toad has smaller legs. It's a lot easier to catch. <laughs> and the toad has a beautiful sound, I think. Now let's hear what the American toad sounds like. Now that's a long sound, or they can carry a long note, those American toads. They're nice to listen to. And in case you're wondering if you do catch a toad, they don't give you warts. It's just a myth. <laughs> so it's fun to explore toads as well. And they're usually easier to catch. Again, because they have smaller legs, they're not hopping quite as far and fast. Now the bumps on their back are kind of special. They have two bumps on the back of their head, right behind their eyes, which are glands that also are pretty protective. If this toad were to be bitten by a predator, the juice inside those glands will get inside the mouth of the animal that bit into it. And it's kind of like a hot pepper juice or something to them. So their mouth will kind of swell up and hopefully they'll spit out the toad. That's the plan anyway. <laughs> um, so toads aren't really good to eat for other animals. Another one that we hear later into the summer is the mink frog. And the mink frog also is kind of interesting. Kind of a blotched look to it. Um, and um, sings much later in the summertime. So mink frog was named after, yep, a mink but because of the weird smell of a mink. Now, I don't know if you've ever smelt a mink before, but it's very musky. And this frog, if you ever catch a mink frog, has kind of a musky smell to it. Here's what they sound like in the marsh. So kind of a knocking sound almost that you will hear on your lake shore. These are also the ones that if you ever see a frog sitting on a lily pad, this is probably the one. Again, later in the summer when our lily pads are, have bloomed and um, are out in the marsh, this is the one that you'll hear. So a few other frogs that you might be curious about, like the bullfrog, this one, I'm not such a fan. Why? Because it's not native to our area. Bullfrogs get really big and they can live anywhere and eat anything. They're actually becoming kind of invasive and moving into southern Minnesota and moving north. The tadpoles of this guy will live for two years in the marsh and eat everything, even other tadpoles. So I'm kind of hoping we don't see bullfrogs. Some, I wish we did see a little more of. This one is called a cricket frog. Again, one of those tiny little frogs, but it's disappeared from its normal uh, population area in Southern Minnesota. We don't hear these in this state so much anymore. Another thing that happens to frogs, of course, that we found are deformities. In some areas where the water isn't healthy, we're finding frogs developing with maybe only one leg or maybe extra legs. This usually indicates some kind of change or parasite that's happening in the water. Scientists are still learning about um, what causes this to happen. So listen to frogs in your yard and you know, without your help, they could croak. One of the ways that you can help is by participating in Frog Watch. You can look up frogwatch.com and see how you can participate this spring by listening to the frogs in your backyard. Now, let's take a trip out to Tamarack and see what kind of frogs we can hear there. Well, I hope you enjoyed a little information about frogs. Springtime is a great time to 
catch frogs, listen to frogs. <laughs> it's so fun. Frogs are fabulous. We'll see you next time. <laughs>